Chateau. I'd like to welcome you all to our 14th annual Connect to College event, although this is our first ever virtual Connect to College. So first I want to thank you all because you're all taking the time to be here today at this event and invest some time into your future. And I can attest firsthand that this is a great place to be. It allowed me to reinvent myself because I was a former CSM student. It also allowed me to have a new opportunity at life. Um, I actually believe so much in College of San Mateo that my oldest daughter will be attending CSM this fall semester. So today we're gonna be learning about student support services, academic services, and we're, we're gonna end with a student panel. I hope you all receive the information you need. However, no worries if you can't stay for the full event. We will later email everyone a link to this video and, allow, and we'll um, send a short video, a short survey that you can all complete. If you have any questions throughout the event, please feel free to type them in the Zoom Q&A box. We will get as many questions as we can answered. So with that now, I would like to ask our acting president, Kim Lopez, to give a brief welcome. Kim has been in our district for over nine years and came to CSM in 2017. It's my great pleasure to introduce Kim Lopez. Thank you, Estella. Hi, everyone. As Estella said, my name is Kim Lopez, and I'm serving as the acting president for the College of San Mateo. And I am so excited to our very first virtual Connect to College. So I just, I only get a few minutes, and I have a lot to say, so I'm going to talk really fast. Um, one of the things I've been asked to address is one of the questions that I'm getting almost daily at this point in time, which is, what are the plans for the College of San Mateo when it comes to summer and fall 2020 in terms of online, face-to-face, -face, remote? So I'd like to let you know, if you haven't heard already, that we have made the decision throughout our district to remain online and remote through the summer of 2020. So all of the courses through web schedule should say whether or not they're online completely or they'll be meeting remotely Zoom and what time and, and all of our student services, which you're gonna get to know very well throughout our broadcast uh, this evening, will also be available for you via um, remote, which is usually through Zoom appointments and our staff are gonna let you know exactly how to access them. Um, so that's, that's our decision for summer. When it comes to fall, it's a little bit more complicated. There is, uh, much, there is much more uncertainty. As, as you all know, we're all watching the news daily and um, listening to our county health director in terms of getting daily updates. So the decision for fall has not been made yet as of today. However, I anticipate that our board of trustees will be making that decision by the end of next week. And we will communicate that broadly to all of our current students and our, our prospective students as well. I can assure you that our number one concern as we make these decisions is for the safety, for your safety, for the safety of all of our employees, and for the safety of all of our families. So please know that is what's guiding our decisions as we need to decide what, what's the best way to address it. So again, that will be coming out shortly. The next thing I wanna to talk to you about now as I transition, is even though we can all agree that we are in uncertain times, I can assure you that your decision to attend the College of San Mateo will be one of the best decisions that you make in your life. Not, all, not only are we affordable, which, which, we all, which you're gonna learn a lot about today in terms of financial aid and the different programs we have for students, but we also have absolutely fantastic faculty. We offer small classes. We offer support services that are unique to the College of San Mateo and to our district. So you're gonna hear about programs that you're not gonna hear about at any other college, such as learning communities, our Promise Program, our Spark Point Center, our Dream Center, to just name a few. So our faculty and staff, and you're gonna learn that and you're gonna see that in action to this evening. Our faculty and staff are friendly, are knowledgeable, they're accessible, and more than anything, they want you to join us for this summer and fall. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Estella and we're gonna get the program started. Thank you so much, Kim. So we'll now be hearing from our amazing student support programs and learn how to pay for college. We'll learn what, um, sorry, we'll learn, how, we'll learn about how to become financially savvy, what is the Promise Scholars Program, and how to get guaranteed admission to University of California 
and you'll hear more about many other support programs. So with that, I'd like to now introduce you to Carol Ulrich, Program Services Coordinator for our Welcome Center. Uh, thank you, Estella. This is, um, I'm so happy to be here tonight. My name's Carol Ulrich, and I work in the Welcome Center. The Welcome Center is a one-stop shop for students at CSM. Uh, we are here to support you, and if you have any questions, we are happy to help you navigate the college. Um, at this point, many of you have already completed steps to enrollment and are prepared to register for summer and fall classes, but there may be some of you thinking about coming to CSM this fall, so I'd like to quickly go through the steps to enroll while we are in this remote environment. You're going to, step number one, you're going to apply to um, admissions, do the admissions application. Uh, you're going to do the welcome orientation, and at this point, we're doing it um, online through WebSmart. Uh, you will be notified after that about your English and math assessment, and then we're going to connect you to make a counseling appointment. And once those the steps are finished, you'll be able to register for classes once the registration dates are issued. Um, if you have any questions um, or need any help, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at the Welcome Center. We'll definitely be able to direct you where you need to go. Thank you. So thank you, Carol. That's great information for all of our new students that are coming to CSM that they should actually really be aware of. Now I'd like to introduce our financial aid technician and scholarship coordinator who will talk to us about free money. Karen Chadwick. Thank you, Estella. And thank you, Carol, for providing great information. Hi, everyone. My name is Karen Chadwick and I work in the financial aid office at College of San Mateo. Financial aid is a program to help students pay their cost of education. We offer various forms of support that can help students pay for tuition, books, supplies, and many other college expenses. As you can see, there are four main sources of where financial aid and scholarships come from. The state of California, the federal government, colleges and universities, and private agencies and organizations. From these four sources, students can qualify for things like gift aid, which is fee waivers, grants and scholarships. So that's all the free money that we can provide. And then once we've exhausted all the free money, then we would offer you federal work study, which is a job where we would help you find um, on campus and you would work for that grant. And then last but not least, student loans, which is money that you pay back and that you're borrowing from the federal government. In order to apply for financial aid, you must submit an application. There are two apps that are available. There's the FAFSA, which is the free application for federal student aid, or the California Dream Act application. You only need to do one application. You'll make sure that you submit the application and that, will, that is what we will use to determine whether you are eligible for financial aid. We are offering various workshops Next slide. We are offering various, various workshops for students um, and we're having them uh, virtual via Zoom. So please, if you need help or you want more information about financial aid, about your FAFSA or about your DREAM Act application, please go to our website, collegeofsanmateo.edu, financial aid, and you can click on any of the Zoom links to attend one of these workshops. If you have any questions, please send us an email to csmfinancialaid at smccd.edu or for the latest information, please follow us on Instagram at csmfinaid. Thanks everyone. Thank you so much, Karen. It's great to hear how students can actually get free money for college. With that now, I'd like to introduce to you, um, well, I'd like to introduce to you our SparkPoint coordinator, Nicole Salvejo. Hello everyone. We are also super excited that you're considering or have confirmed your enrollment at the College of San Mateo. We are fortunate that during this time we can offer you access to an array of services remotely. We also definitely look forward to offering those same services in person when we all return to campus. So I hope you uh, consider utilizing all of our wonderful programs, including SparkPoint. SparkPoint is a free financial empowerment and basic needs support service for students. It is our goal to work one-on-one -on -one with you so that you feel more in control and savvy with managing your finances. Additionally, we recognize that students and families are juggling multiple priorities outside of education. 
If you or your family find yourselves in need of support related to meeting your basic needs, SparkPoint will work with you and connect you to resources and opportunities. How do we do this? So first, we offer free financial coaching to students. In fact, we incentivize students through financial aid and will award them for meeting specific goals they themselves identify, whether it's related to budgeting, credit score education, debt elimination, credit cards, or preparing for their financial futures with a transfer or transition from CSM. Pro tip, we also provide free tax preparation and filing services. The 2018 and 2019 tax returns are needed to complete your FAFSA and DREAM Act applications, which make you eligible to earn those financial aid dollars. Second, we offer support with applying and navigating public benefit programs. Whether it's applying for CalFresh, so it's money for groceries, Medi-Cal or medical insurance, or even unemployment. If students have questions related to emergency housing or county aid assistance programs, we will work with them to provide that information and referral. Lastly, when we are on campus, we offer students the opportunity to utilize our free supplemental groceries program. Students are able to pick up items like vegetables, fruit, eggs, milk, and chicken. While we are in shelter in place, our on-site food, food program is unavailable. However, we will work with students to connect them with food programs that are open and available during this time. SparkPoint is a program that students access anytime, whenever they need the support. We serve all students regardless of what program or major they are in and regardless of their citizenship status. This includes our AB 540, non-resident and international student populations. You are welcome to utilize all or just some of our services. You are in the driver's seat and you decide the pace and your involvement with the program. Lastly, there are no public charge or tax applications if you use our services. It only takes one quick application to sign up. To learn more about SparkPoint services, please reach out to us. We wanna hear from you. Our contact information is displayed on the screen and on our College of San Mateo website. Also, major points if you follow us on Instagram, at CSM SparkPoint. Thank you. Thank you so much for that information, Nicole. I wish we had all these services when I was a student at CSM. With that, many of you have actually been asking about our Promise Scholars Program and what that is. So with that, I'd like to introduce to you Tiffany Zamet, Director of High School Transition and Dual Enrollment, to talk about our Promise Scholars Program. Thanks, Estella, and good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here, and thanks, Nicole. SparkPoint is a wonderful program that provides so much for our students. We're truly grateful to them. Uh, my name is Tiffany Zamet, and I am the director of the Promise Scholars Program and dual enrollment here at the College of San Mateo, uh, but I'll jump right to it. Uh, so with respect to the Promise Scholars Program, uh, what it is, we are a degree or certificate completion program, and we support students to complete their degree or certificate in two years or more, depending on your needs and your education goals. Our goal is to use an intrusive research-based model out of New York to provide wraparound services and engagement for our students to ensure their success. We look to provide a community for our students with people to support them through their educational goals and as they explore and define their next steps in their post-secondary journey. How do we do this? Uh, we do it by requiring students four counseling appointments per semester and four required assignments and workshops that are catered to our students. So a total of eight engagements per semester. And given this high level of engagement with our team, we really look to support your students as holistically as we can. Um, how you qualify. Uh, the requirements to be able to apply to the program are that you are a first time full time student enrolling in a minimum of at least 12 units completing the FAFSA or DREAM Act application and you are a California resident. Last but not least, um, next slide, what our program provides you. Um, most importantly, I really like to make note of the fact that we provide a counselor at 150 to 1 ratio, meaning 150 students to one counselor. This is how we're able to have students meet with their counselor once per month and really provide uh, an intrusive model that allows for a connection and community building to point people in a program that really want to get you to reach your goals, uh, depending, depending on what they are, certificate, transfer, uh, associates, whatever they might be. We also pro provide promise specific workshops and group counseling support, $50 per month towards gas or food based on your attendance and engagement with our program. Tuition and fees are covered through co completion and $300 per semester in textbook voucher and 150 during the summer. 
we've moved all these services um, to remote to a remote format given the times, but we look forward to potentially supporting you this next fall. Thank you. And if there are any questions, please reach out to us at csmpromise at smccd.edu. Thank you. Thank you so much for that information, Tiffany. So next, unfortunately, Mike Mitchell was, uh, our Transfer Center supervisor was unable to be with us today due to prior engagements. However, we do have a short video for you today um, regarding transfer services that we'll be sharing with you. Hello, and welcome to College of San Mateo's first ever virtual Connect to College event. My name is Mike Mitchell, Program Supervisor for the College of San Mateo Transfer Services Department. Your first step as a transfer student, once you apply online, is to meet with an academic advisor. The academic advisor or counselor, as they're known, can set up an, a student educational plan to provide you the appropriate coursework that you need to be, to be eligible to transfer. The basic transfer requirements are completing your first two years of college coursework at College of San Mateo. That is your freshman and sophomore years. Once you obtain a minimum of 60 units uh, or more, depending on your major, you are eligible to apply to any number of our UCs, CSUs, or private, independent, or out-of-state institutions. The application period is typically during the fall semester, and you would apply one year before you transfer. So your last year at CSM would be the year you apply. We do offer opportunities to apply to a UC or CSU or a private institution. We do offer certain guarantees as well. To apply to private schools, you basically have to just meet their minimum GPA and any certain course requirements. For CSUs, you're guaranteed on the non-high demand majors, but still are very eligible to apply for the high impact majors. UCs work the same way with an added bonus of being eligible if you meet the minimum GPA requirements to apply for a UC tag. That's the UC transfer admission guarantee. And if you meet those requirements, then you're guaranteed admission. You do not have to go to that school. You can still apply to other schools, but it sort of works like a good insurance policy. You are guaranteed admission if you meet and follow all the requirements. And those requirements are updated every year. Other resources that can help you is we, this fall, we have uh, three events going on. Transfer Day, historically black colleges and universities, and private independent uh, domestic international student fair that can also assist you with that. Um, so please take advantage of those, take advantage of our transfer club, and please check out our website at collegesanmateo.edu transfer. And that site will also show you a link to former transfer students who have transferred on to four-year schools that can give you their, their, their testimony as well. Again, welcome to College of San Mateo and check out our link, collegeofsanmateo.edu backslash transfer. Thank you and looking forward to seeing you at CSM. So although Mike wasn't able to be with us today, I'd like to thank him for taking the time to create this video for us. Now with that, I'd like to introduce to you Ariana Avendano, EOPS Program Services Coordinator. Thank you so much. Mike Mitchell is definitely a great resource for our students that are hoping to transfer to a four-year institution. Um, good evening, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. My name is Ariana Avendaño, and I am one of the coordinators for Extended Opportunity Programs and Services. EOPS is a student support program at the College of San Mateo, and we provide both financial and academic support services to our students that qualify. We offer priority registration, which pretty much means that our students get to register for their classes first every semester. We also have individualized counseling for our students. Every student in EOPS is assigned to their very own counselor. We do help our students purchase their textbooks as well as transportation. We have parking permits and bus tokens for our students. We also have school supplies and we have free tutoring. We offer academic workshops and a lot of assistance with transfer. We also help our students apply for financial aid every academic year as well as scholarship applications. In our center, we have a computer lab where students can study and they can print for free as well. As far as the qualifications, that's a nice photo of our 
students in the office. Um, we have three qualifications that make students eligible for our program. The first one is that they are registered full time in 12 units. The second is that they are eligible for the California Community College Promise Grant and they must meet educational criteria as outlined by our program and information on educational criteria is on our website. We do offer, um, we are taking new students for the fall semester um, and our application process is outlined here. Students must have a G number, they must have already registered for CSM and registered for fall 2020. Um, we ask that they complete their financial aid application, the FAFSA, the DREAM Act, or CCPG, whichever one they're eligible for. And that is how we check their income eligibility. We do have an EOPS interest form, um, and that is available on our website, and we can check eligibility and follow up with any student that is interested in applying. Um, eligible students will then meet with an EOPS counselor. They will submit an application, and they will attend an EOPS orientation. Any student that is interested in applying to our program for the fall semester can contact us via email at csmeops at smccd.edu. And we actually encourage students to also follow us on, on Instagram at EOPSCSM, and they can also send us a direct message through there. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that information, Ariana. And I can vouch that EOPS is an amazing support program because I am a former EOPS student and very proud. Now we'll be learning about our Disability Resource Center from Irania Gonzalez, Disability Resource Center Program Services Coordinator. Hi, thank you, Estella. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, as Estella mentioned, my name is Irania Gonzalez and I'm the Program Services Coordinator for the Disability Resource Center at CSM. Um, the Disability Resource Center provides accommodations and services to students with disabilities. Um, disability can be permanent or temporary, um, observable or non-observable. So um, that can mean like a physical disability versus um, like a learning disability or mental health disability that you cannot observe. Um, so right now the DRC office is remote, but we're fully fine functioning and able to support students in any way that we can for their online instruction. Um, accommodations that we have right now, um, we're offering Chromebook loans for students who need them for their classes, alternate media, so that can mean um, like audiobooks for your textbooks, um, assistive technology like uh, speech to text software, extended testing time, tutoring. Um, we've had tutors doing Zoom tutoring appointments, which is really great for our students. Um, real-time captioning and more. Um, so these are some accommodations that work for online instruction as well um, as being applicable for face-to-face -face instruction. Some other ones that we have that are uh, more suitable for in-class are like peer note takers, smart pens, and also uh, accessible furniture. Um, so ways that students can apply for DRC services. So once you already apply to CSM, completed the matriculation, you'll um, go to our website and under forms, you'll see our DRC application. You'll upload your disability documentation. So an example can be if you're in high school and you have an IEP or 504 plan, you can upload that um, or like a letter from your doctor. And then once we receive your documentation, we'll schedule you with our uh, counselor for an intake appointment and they'll provide you accommodations and academic counseling if you need it as well. Um, if you have questions about your documentation, feel free to email us and um, we can take a look at it. And um, some students who might not have documentation, we also have learning disability specialists available. Um, that's more so when we're back on campus. So um, if that's something you're interested in, definitely email us. Um, if you have questions, just check out the Q&A box and I'll see what I can answer, and if not, just um, shoot us an email. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Irania, for telling us about this great resource that's available to all of our to many of our students. Now, I'd like to introduce to you Jessica Damien, STEM at CSM Program Services Coordinator. 
Hi everyone, I'm excited to be here and virtually meet our new CSM Fall Class of 2020. My name is Jessica Damian and I am the Program Services Coordinator for STEM at CSM. So STEM is an acronym for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math, and STEM at CSM is a network of the program, resources, and services on campus that support students who are either STEM majors or just taking STEM courses. I'll start with the Math Resource Center in Building 18 and the Integrated Science Center in Building 36. These centers are the hub of our STEM departments. You can come here to work on homework, meet with faculty during their office hours, and participate in fun events like Pi Day. Both of our centers have drop-in tutoring. Our tutors are selected because they not only have a demonstrated mastery of their subject, but they also have the personal skills to connect with you and create a positive learning uh, relationship. I encourage you to visit the centers when campus is open and become a part of our STEM community. We also have our Science in Action speaker series every semester. Our series brings professionals from different STEM fields such as medicine, computer science, and even space exploration to speak on campus. Our speakers share their successes and their challenges along with their current research or work. Most of our speakers are either community college graduates themselves or are underrepresented in the field of STEM. After their talk, you'll have the opportunity to connect with them, ask questions, and get advice about their field. Currently, you can see recordings of our past speakers if you visit our website, which will be shared at the end of my presentation. The next pro program that I want to encourage you to participate in is Math Science Jam. So Math Science Jam is held before each semester, and it includes a week of math and science instruction that's meant to help you boost your skills before you take your next math or science course. It allows you to brush up on key areas that you may be struggling with or familiarize yourself with concepts that are coming up in your next course. Usually the jam is only held for a week. However, our upcoming jam in August will last two weeks because it will be held on a virtual format. And we understand that Zoom burnout is real. You'll be able to choose from, to attend either a morning, afternoon, or evening daily session. And all sessions will be recorded and accessible to students who register. Uh, for more information, you can visit collegesanmateo.edu slash mathjam. And once you register, you'll be receiving updates from our team um, regarding our our August jam. The last but not least program that I want to share is MESA. So the MESA program is for students who are declared STEM majors. So if you've been here for a semester or two and you decide that it's for you, I really encourage you to apply for this program. The requirements is that students are either low income or first generation, meaning you're the first in your family to graduate from college. That being said, if you have siblings who have graduated from college or are in college, you still qualify. As a MESA student, you'll attend field trips at various colleges, you'll receive extensive transfer services, you'll be able to meet with an academic counselor, and you'll also be cohorted in certain STEM classes with other MESA students, which is a great way to build community. Most four-year universities also have their own MESA program, so once you transfer, you'll have a guaranteed support network. If you want to learn more about MESA, I encourage you to contact the MESA director, Olivia Viveros, and you can find the MESA page from our general STEM website. Also, um, be sure to follow us on Instagram because we do profile our STEM students, our staff and faculty, as well as our program offerings. And we're really looking forward to connecting and building our STEM community with you. Thank you very much. Thank you so Thank much, you so much for all of that, all of that information. information. Next, we're going to hear from our Dean of Academic Support and Learning Technologies, Tarana Chapel. Thank you, Estella, and thank you, Jessica, for all of the support that you offer to our students in STEM at CSM. You've done an amazing job. Uh, good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. My name is Tarana Chapel, and I am the Dean of Academic Support and Learning Technologies at CSN, also known as the ASLT division. Our division supports services and innovative program, programming that contribute to student success and give faculty and students opportunities to work together as a community. One of the opportunities that I would like to discuss with you today is our amazing learning communities. Now you may be wondering, what is a learning community? Learning communities are cohort-based programs that link instruction and discipline areas and connect staff and students who share common academic goals and interests. 
Some of the common features that are included in all of our learning communities are classes working together with common themes, content, and materials, students and faculty working collaboratively in a friendly, supportive atmosphere, specialized counseling and transfer support, and also a lot of fun activities such as university field trips, cultural events, and guest speakers. One of the central themes in our learning communities is our emphasis in community involvement for our students both on and off campus. And some of our learning communities have partnerships where students can participate in internships and gain valuable experience. Next slide, please. We currently have three categories of learning communities. We have our cultural communities, uh, such as MANA, which focuses on Pacific Focus Studies, Umoja focuses on African Focus Studies, and the Puente Project focuses on Latinx Studies. We have our interest communities where students can participate in the Honors Project, and that's for students who are interested in advanced research. We have Writing in the End Zone, which is focused on our student athletes, particularly in uh, football for that particular learning community. And we also have our transitional communities that help support students as they're transitioning to the College of San Mateo. And those are project change for our students who have been justice impacted or are currently uh, incarcerated. And we also have the middle college program, which is very unique because that's a program for our juniors and seniors that are in high school and they're taking colleges in high school as well as uh, college courses in high school as well as the high school courses, and it's located on our college campus. There are several benefits to joining a learning community, but some of the comments that uh, we receive from both students and faculty about why they really love their family and their learning community uh, are their ability to connect with students and faculty through a common interest, uh, the fact that it provides a more engaging and satisfying college experience and that it enhances their experience overall at CSM, which is what we really want for you here. We want you to have an enhanced experience outside of the classroom. And these are just some of the photos of our students and faculty that are involved in our learning communities. Next slide, please. If you'd like to learn more information about learning communities or to be in contact with one of our amazing program coordinators, please visit us at collegeofsanmateo.edu slash learning communities, or you can leave a question in the chat uh, box located in this session. Thank you, and I hope to see you at CSM. Thank you for that information, Tarana. How exciting listening to all of this and learning more about either your own culture or about a different culture. Next, I'd actually like to introduce to you Erin Schaefer, Student Life and Leadership Manager. Well, hello everyone. My name is Erin Schaefer, Student Life and Leadership Manager. Uh, the Student Life Department, uh, primarily, if you're looking at what our department does, is we're there to support all the fun things you do at the college. Um, we have 40 plus different clubs that cover cultural, social, and academic groups, including PTK, uh, AGS, which uh, represent um, our, honors, our honors groups. And then we have uh, a breadth of different clubs that, that look at our cultural development, international students, and all sorts of fun activities that you can participate in. Uh, we also have uh, a very incredibly active student government um, that represents students on a um, to the administration, to the district, and are a strong advocate for you uh, when it comes to a student voice. Uh, a lot of students come in uh, to the college thinking they can't get involved in student government, but our student government has set up uh, several ways for you to get your voice out and be able to uh, make sure the college is hearing what, what you need. Um, we have an advocacy board which talks to local and state and federal leaders about what students are facing at community college. We have a cultural awareness board that um, works on doing programming, focusing on our 
our, our cultural groups and, and making sure we're representing our diversity in a programming board, which just does fun events on campus and, and tries to keep you all engaged and on campus and under and enjoying being at campus. And lastly, part of that, what we do with the student government is a lot of leadership development. If you're interested in conflict resolution, doing team building, uh, developing yourself as a leader, um, that is where you come to us and we'll help you do that. Uh, also, uh, as part of our office, we um, will run your student IDs for you. So when you need um, student IDs, um, and we're also there just to insist you on all sorts of different ways that you can help. We'll connect you to other groups. We'll connect you to other programs that you need. And we're there to support student needs in any way we possibly can. Thank you. Thank you, Erin, for telling us all how, we, how the students can get more involved on campus. Thank you all for providing such great information with such limited time that we have. We will now continue with our academic programs to learn more about majors and what we offer here at CSM. With that, I would like to introduce to you Alex Gariba, College of San Mateo Academic and Career Counselor. Thank you, Estella. I really appreciate it. Good evening to the students and, and parents and guardians. Uh, welcome to College of San Mateo uh, on behalf of all of our CSM family. The, I'm glad to be here. This is a special event. I was actually part of the first Connect to College back in 2007 when I was in Estella's role. Uh, and like a lot of the folks who have shared already, like Ariana and Estella, I myself was also um, really positively impacted by my experience at College of San Mateo. So I was a student before I became a counselor. I've been with CSM since 2006 uh, and had a really wonderful experience in transitioning to UC Berkeley. And now I'm a counselor, uh, a career counselor, academic counselor, and instructor at CSM. So um, we are, um, Dave's going to help me out uh, by providing some slides. So I'm going to go ahead and um, talk to you about uh, educational goals uh, that we have at CSM. So uh, I think Mike Mitchell did a really fantastic job uh, talking about transfer programs, right? So there are really, um, the primary reason a lot of students after high school pursue CSM is, of course, it is a, a really great financial decision in terms of saving money, but there's also really great opportunities to per pursue career training as well as transfer to universities. So uh, as far as career training, we have so many great options, um, but just to kind of highlight for you, uh, community colleges in general, they train over 70% of first responders and we know how vital they are, especially at this time uh, of COVID-19 and coronavirus, but over 70% of the state's nurses and firefighters, for example, um, are trained at community college. And that's something that you can do as a student is pursue a career training program that's hands-on and gives you great experience and go into the world of work, right? Um, and you can earn certificates and degrees in order to do that. Uh, another reason a lot of students come to CSM is to transfer. And Mike did a really wonderful job of highlighting the benefits like the transfer guarantees, but we also have um, associate transfer degrees which give you additional priority to get into Cal State University schools some private schools, some historically black colleges as well. Um, so when you come to CSM, um, a lot of you will be looking to go full time, right? So in high school, um, we, you, use, you have uh, credits, right? Uh, in college, we, we use the term units. So it's important to understand kind of the terminology. Um, and uh, basically it's the number of hours in, in the fall or the spring that you spend in class. So, Full-time is 12 or more units. And what you're going to be taking for most of you at the college is a combination of classes for the major uh, that you have. You're also going to be taking some general education. Uh, and, and then you'll also get to take elective classes that you're interested in. So again, there are a lot of great benefits uh, and wanted to talk to you about some of the educational goals. So Dave, if we can move on um, to the next slide on how counseling can help you. Um, so I uh, want to make sure that you are all connecting with a counselor at least once a semester. I know many of you have participated in our priority enrollment program uh, and have been part of uh, the group sessions or one-on-one -on -one counseling. 
but you don't want it to stop just there with your first uh, initial contact point with CSM. Uh, we strongly encourage you to meet with a counselor at least once a semester. And of course, for some of our learning communities and special programs, you're gonna meet more often, but not just to uh, plan your current semester, but to check in how you're doing and make any necessary adjustments. Um, the counselors really wanna get to know you and uh, develop a plan because it's not a one size fits all thing for students to take and you're unique and you're important. So um, we're, we're happy to uh, make sure that you have an updated ed plan to reach whatever your career and educational goals are. Um, there are some resources that you can actually utilize on your own to kind of advocate for yourself and, re and understand and learn the process. So uh, one of the really great tools out there is assist.org and you can use that tool if you're interested in transferring from College of San Mateo to a California State University or a University of California campus. I myself used it uh, when I transferred from CSM to UC Berkeley. It's been around for quite some time and it can be really helpful in highlighting what the uh, general education is, but also it's very specific in letting you know what the major prep you need to do in order to get into that major. So at CSM, you're doing your freshman and sophomore year and transferring as a junior at the university. You don't start over as a freshman when you leave here. So um, tools like assist.org can be helpful. And as you research um, potential destinations to go, you can use tools like uh, College Board or niche.com. There's also the American Independent California Colleges and Universities, AICCU, which can be helpful. Uh, and if you're um, kind of undecided and want to research careers, ONET online is a great thing that you can Google and research too. So again, I want to welcome each and every single one of you to come and make an appointment with a counselor um, so that we can uh, work with you to help you reach that goal. And we'll move on to the next slide. A lot of you may have an idea of what major you're pursuing, right? So the major that you listed, you, you know, that, that'll determine the science and the math that you're taking as well as the major prep. But there are also a lot of students, uh, and I could relate to this myself when I was a student that had no clue what, what you wanna do, right? Um, so we wanna help you get on that path and college is a great place to explore and take uh, a lot of different disciplines and learn different things. Um, but you can also be really strategic in helping yourself maximize your time uh, so that you can go on to transfer or pursue that career. So, want to offer you up um, that we have career counseling as well as classes that can help you identify your preferences, your values, your interests, and tying that all together uh, so that you can make a decision about uh, a major and career. So we have great classes like Counseling 120 and Career 126, um, which is an exploration and assessment uh, program. We also have programs like the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator and Strong Interest Inventory Assessments which our counselors can help you with as well. Um, so I want to close uh, by saying welcome to the CSM family. Should you need anything, um, CSM Career Services is here for you as well as the counseling division. Uh, and we're also working in the summer. So if you need to contact a counselor um, in the summer, you can reach out to us. I'll be here all summer as well. So really look forward to working with you and go Bulldogs. Thank you, Alex. Believe it or not, I actually learned some new and useful information that's available to students. Now, I'd like to introduce to you Mohsen Janipur, Math and Science Professor, and Jessica Damian, Program Services Coordinator for HSI STEM. Hello, everyone. My name is Mohsen Janapur, and I am professor of math, physics, and astronomy at the College of San Mateo. And uh, I also coordinate the astronomy program. And I am very excited to tell you about a new program that we have. We have a new AS degree in astronomy, and also we are working on an AA degree. Our AS degree is uh, transferable for people who want to get the degree in also other uh, physics in uh, astrophysics or astronomy and uh, 
there are very few community colleges that have that, so we are very, very fortunate to have that program. Our students do a lot of research, and as a result of that, uh, what we have, the images that I have, uh, probably you seeing, is this images that are taken by some of my students. Anyway, uh, we have a huge outreach program at CSM. We have a project at Star, Stargaze where we have about 108 elementary schools coming in and we have shows for them. They have monthly astronomical shows, but also we have observations. And with those, I think I do not want to run my time. I will uh, introduce Jessica, I think. Jessica is gonna tell you a lot more. I'm sorry about that. I might have been muted when I did my introduction. Um, but yes, once again, I'm Jessica. I'm from STEM at CSM. I'm honored to be following career services. STEM at CSM works closely with career counselors, and we often recommend students to visit the Career Hub to find STEM internships. I'll be giving you an overview of our math and science division. As you can see, we have extensive offerings from biology, physics, engineering, and, and nursing. I can attest that the math and science faculty that I work with are truly dedicated to your success. I've witnessed them go above and beyond to meet student needs, especially during our transition to online learning. Some professors have been here for almost 30 years, like Tanya Belize in biology or Robert Hassan in math. Faculty like them bring decades of experience and passion to their work. On the other hand, we have relatively new professors such as Angel Pilar in math and Jose Gutierrez in engineering, and they bring an exciting energy to their courses and a new perspective on learning. As I mentioned before, one of the places that we build community with students, staff, and faculty is the Math Resource Center and the Integrated Science Center. So I encourage you to stop by and meet our dedicated professors when we return to campus. Our division also has state-of-the-art technology, including our beautiful planetarium that is used for classes and public events, and our new 3D printer that just arrived for the engineering department this semester. If you're taking an advanced biology class, you may have the opportunity to actually dissect a human cadaver, or if you're taking physics, you may be able to try out one of our new drone kits. Which leads me to share our new offerings for spring 2021, which I encourage you to explore. These courses are great opportunities for the students who are STEM curious. These courses allow you to fulfill the natural GE science requirement that is required you for you to graduate or transfer. And the great thing is that there's no math or science prerequisites to take these, for take these classes. So it's great to just drop, um, dive right in. The first course is Physics 130, Drone-Based Science and Engineering, where you're able to actually build and fly your own drone. You'll also be able to learn more about the growing career field of drones. Alex Wong, who teaches it, is an excellent instructor who provides students the opportunities to put their skills into practice, such as attending field trips or presenting their researches at uh, conferences. The second course is an interdisciplinary research course that will be led by various STEM faculty. It'll cover different topics in chemistry, biology, physics, and more. You'll be able to conduct hands-on experiments and analysis. It's a great way for you to develop technical skills and research experience early on in your academic career with dedicated and caring faculty guiding you. So again, please be sure to look out for these classes when you're choosing um, your course load in spring 2021, and be sure to visit our STEM website in the upcoming months to learn more. So with that quick overview, I will hand it back to Mosin, who will be covering more of our offerings in the astronomy department. Once again, hello, and uh, sorry for the little bit of hiccup. As you can see, the image that you see there is the Dumbbell, Dumbbell uh, Nebula, which was taken by our students. You have a good opportunity to take a lot of research and your research can be published. And uh, as I said, right now we are offering a AS degree in this fall and we are working on AA degree. And both of those are gonna be available for you and both of them have a tremendous amount of transfer courses in there to other part of the field. And uh, without uh, taking any further time, uh, I will turn it to, uh, I think, uh, Stella to tell you more about it. Thank you. Actually, Mohsen, would you like to talk about your astronomy events? Oh, the, we, the, one of the major things that we do, we have community outreach. And one of the part of the community outreach is our 
uh, Science Astronomy Day, and that day, and this is generally on the September 26 every year, and is a Saturday. We go from early in the morning to late at night with the many many science workshops and throughout the campus, culminating in a keynote speak by well-known speakers. Some are Nobel laureates, and uh, what we have actually in that program, it is open to anybody from age five to age 95. And there uh, is a great opportunity for everyone to learn about science. Along with that, we have our every month shows, two planetarium shows, and also we have observation. Thank you. So thank you both Mosin and Jessica for sending us out of this world. You get my little joke? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Now, we're going to hear from Laura Dempsey, Creative Arts and Social Science Dean. Thank you, Laura. Hi, everyone. Um, it's really nice for me to follow math and science because that was my home on campus for 16 years as an engineering instructor. And we do have an awesome engineering program led by Jose Gutierrez. I'm currently the Dean of Creative Arts and Social Sciences, and we are a big division. If you're planning to transfer or to earn an associate degree, no matter what your major is, you're gonna take several of our classes. So let me tell you a little bit about them. Let's start with creative arts and the art and music area. Our faculty in art and music are award-winning artists and professional musicians. Most of our art and music classes are offered at multiple levels. So you can begin at an introductory level and progress to mastery. Our studio art classes include drawing and painting in oil, acrylic, and watercolor, and also figure painting, portraiture, and plein air or outdoor painting, which is really nice at this time of year. We have courses in digital photography and also in film photography and development techniques, at least when we can be back on campus and in the dark room. And our ceramics and sculpture courses provide hands-on exploration of media in three dimensions. On the right side and top of this page, you'll see some images of our music program. Our music faculty are talented educators who bring to the classroom their experience in the Bay Area's jazz, Latin jazz, classical, musical theater, and electronic music scenes. We offer music theory courses, voice and instrumental ensembles, both small ensembles and large ensembles, and we have ensembles in classical jazz and world music areas. We also have a cutting edge electronic music program that's open to students with any level of experience. You can come in without any formal training and be part of that program. And in the top center of this slide, you'll see some of the students in one of our electronic music studios. So let's move on to digital media, which is sort of an intersection between the world of creation in the fine arts and the study of the society that we see in the social sciences. Digital media is all about communicating through sound and images. Students in our audio and video production classes use, uh, sorry, pause. Students in our audio and video production classes learn to use state-of-the-art equipment and they use the campus and the community as a lab for recording interviews and events. On the left side of this page, you see KDOG, our streaming studio radio, student radio station, where students produce live and recorded shows and cover events, including our upcoming electronic music festival on the 15th. In our graphic design classes, students gain a strong foundation in both art and software tools. On the right side of the slide, you see some examples. If you look really closely, perhaps maybe, maybe you can't even see it on your device, but if you look really closely, you'll see that the image of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg is actually made of letters, and the text is from one of her important early cases. So this is an example of the kind of work that students do in the graphic design courses. We also have courses in social media and web design, and that's the technology that's keeping all of us connected these days. So finally, let's go on to the social sciences. Social science is all about understanding society and human behavior. It includes fields like psychology, anthropology, and geography, where we learn about how the human mind, body, and our natural surroundings influence individual and group behavior. It also includes sociology, political science, and economics, where we learn about the social institutions that are built on this behavior. And in history, philosophy, and ethnic studies, we learn to reflect on those institutions and think about how they can be improved. The social sciences are the background for careers in counseling and social work, in business, economics, and government, in law and public policy, and in research and teaching. 
College of San Mateo has transfer degrees in many social science disciplines, and we have a really cool new interdisciplinary transfer degree in law, public policy, and society. So if you have any questions about the creative arts or the social sciences, please shoot me an email at the address that you see in front of you, csmcass at smctv.edu. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you on campus or in the ether. Thank you, Laura, for all of that, all of that information. And wow, what an inter interesting collection of subjects. Now we're going to hear from Christy Ridgway, our language arts dean. Thanks, Estelle. Bienvenidos. Welcome. Ni hao. Hello. My name is Christy Ridgway, and I'm the dean of language arts. And I've been here at CSM for nearly 18 years, most of that actually as a professor. You might be wondering, what is language arts, or why take language arts classes? Well, I would first say to be inspired. In our programs, communication studies, English, ESL, film studies, modern languages, each of these introduced students to a variety of interesting topics. And I've highlighted two here for you that we're offering both in the summer and the fall. Uh, first, you'll see here crime and detective fiction, which is our Lit 150 class. This will be offered this summer. And in the fall, I have an example from our film uh, sequence Film 122 is our film history focus, which will change in the theme from semester to semester. In the fall, we're very excited to be having the Latina resistance and revolution in the uh, 1960s and 70s as the focus. So you might join us for those. Also, another way you'd be inspired is not just by our themes and topics, but by our professors. They bring extensive knowledge and background to the classroom. For instance, we have published authors who've written novels, nonfiction, and poetry. We also have seasoned film writers and producers, including those who are featured at the local San Francisco International Film Festival and even at the Khan Film Festival. They also have experience with both small indie and big blockbuster movie studios, including Pixar. Most of all, you'll be inspired, um, and this is my favorite, because our pr professors are actively engaged with their students their classes are engaging, they're interactive, and they really are committed to working with their students to develop their own voices. So again, I ask you why language arts? So that I can help give an answer. Next slide. Uh, well, you'll be inspired, yes, but you'll also gain important skills. Communication skills to develop that voice, orally in communication studies, in writing and English, visually in our film studies area, and even in different languages with our ASL, Chinese, Spanish, and an ESL if your native language is not English. Here on the slide is an example of how some of these versatile communication skills cross disciplines. Our summer film class, uh, Film 130, is being taught online and is our screenwriting class. It's actually part of our film studies program, but of course here uh, we also have an emphasis in writing, so nice crossover. Um, another important skill in addition to, um, to that is our cultural awareness. In our language arts classes, all of them delve into an understanding of other cultures and also will touch on your, your own. And this is not just restricted to our modern languages, our ASL, Chinese, Spanish, and ESL classes, but we do this in all of our classes. We explore culture, including in our Puente, Emoja, and Mana learning communities, which you heard a little bit about earlier. So language, course, uh, language arts courses help you to explore, expand your horizons, not just to better understand the world around you, but also yourself. So I'll ask again, why language arts? Well, my final reason is that it is here that you'll build your future. Well, part of this is because you will have already grown in your ability to think critically and to problem solve. Don't be mistaken, that's not just for math and science. We do this also in language arts. We teach argumentation, debate. We help you do analysis. Also to collaborate with others. Most of our class sizes are small and our students engage quite often in group work. These so-called soft skills, critical thinking, collaboration, communications, cultural sensitivity, these are those highly sought after job skills that employers are looking for across all industries. So really, I wouldn't say soft skills, I would call them super skills. These are the skills that have staying power. They're the ones that transfer to different jobs over time and they don't go out of style, which is something I think especially important in our current environment. So an education rich in language arts will give you confidence 
and an ability to advocate for yourself, for your family and your community, to work towards a better future, whatever that may be. And I know many of you will come through language arts for your basics, your requirements, those English and communication courses that are oh so very important. But I do hope that you'll stay and I invite you to explore all that we have to offer, to come and be inspired, to gain important skills, and to build your future here with us in language arts. We look forward to seeing you and hope you will um, contact us at csmlanguagearts at smccd.edu if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you for that, Christy. See, now I think we should all just go and learn a new language. I love the way you started your presentation. Now, with that, we're going to hear from Ashley Phillips, Director of Career Education. Thank you, Estella. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ashley Phillips, and I'm the Director of Career Education at CSM. Um, by now, you've heard from a number of different people, and each person has talked about programs at CSM. Career education programs are found in every division on campus, and I will talk to you today about a few of the most um, popular in the business technology division. And as you can see here from this slide, there's a number of different um, programs available. Um, career education programs at CSM are short-term programs designed to help you gain skills in an in-demand industry and earn a livable wage. As you can see from the list, there is a wide variety. Um, some you've heard about, and I'll talk about a, a few. Um, next slide, please. CSM's accounting program is one of the most popular on campus with amazing faculty who are dedicated to your career goals. You can earn a certificate, associate's degree, or transfer to a four-year university. There are special events such as Meet the Firms Night where you can network with employers um, from accounting firms. And in a few slides, you'll see a picture of a group of students that visited Google's accounting department. Um, next slide, please. CSM's business program is designed to prepare students um, who are seeking to earn a career in business or start their own. It's taught by experienced real world business people um, and those business professionals combine classroom learning with hands on experience. The department also hosts pitch deck competitions, which help students complete and deliver a pitch deck presentation for potential funders. And of course, here you can also earn a certificate associates or a transfer degree. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, and here we have our CIS or computer and information science program. Um, as a college close to Silicon Valley, it's fitting that I speak about um, our computer and information science program, which has courses available in programming, data science and big data, app development, cybersecurity, and many others. Many of our grads go on to work at Oracle, Google, Apple, Cisco, Adobe, and of course, College of San Mateo. Next slide, please. All right, so electronics, and there you see our professor, um, Steve Gonzalez. Um, it's one of the most, pro it's one of the, I think, I like all the programs on our campus, but electronics um, actually has a 100% placement rate. So it's a great program if you're looking for in-demand skills and a high wage um, career. Um, this program provides students for entry level work as an electronics technician. And we have a great relationship with local employers such as BART and PG&E. Um, in fact, uh, there's pictures on the website of um, some of our students servicing BART trains. All right, so next uh, slide, please. And here you have the Workforce Hub. I'd like to let you know that our Workforce Hub is dedicated to preparing career education students for work, as well as connecting them to jobs and internships. We do have a career services department, and we work in, con in connection with that department, but we are solely focused on um, helping those career education students connect to internship opportunities, and um, experiences that will help them in their careers. Next slide, please. All right, and here again, I want to just uh, remind you of all the programs that we have. Some of the other deans have mentioned their programs here and um, those programs do, you know, uh, span the, the college, but I'd like to just take a moment to, to let you know that we have a lot of offerings and I encourage you to explore those op offerings. Next slide, please. All right, so for more information, you can visit the website here, careers.collegeofsanmateo.edu. Thank you, and I hope to see you soon. Ashley, thank you for going over all of those career programs. Seriously, listening to you makes me want to go back to school and maybe pick up another career. Who knows, maybe I'll have time to do something in the evenings. Now, we're going to be hearing from Andreas Wolf, Wolf 
Dean of Kinesiology, Athletics, and Dance. And Andreas, you'll get to take all the time you need because we're running ahead of schedule. I understand. I got about a half hour, right? That's, that's pretty awesome. I can, I can talk. Um, Estelle, thank you for that wonderful introduction. I want to welcome all of you to Connect to College and your participation and interest in College of San Mateo. I'd like to start off my presentation the way Alex Gariba ended his and say, go Bulldogs. Um, I have a, a number of different hats that I wear in my division, and I'm going to spend a few minutes just to talk to you about each and every one of them. So we can go to the next slide, please. And this is where you'll see uh, our mascot, the Bulldog. Uh, his name is Rival Goldstone. We actually have a nice bronze uh, Bulldog at the uh, entrance of the gym facing the, room, the rest of the campus. So feel free when you're on campus to stand next to Rival and take a picture, uh, take a selfie. So here are some, I'm gonna to talk to you first about our athletic offerings. Um, and for our men's sports in the fall, we have football cross country. In the winter, last, last uh, year was the first, uh, time, uh, first uh, time we had men's basketball. We just started the program, it's a new program. And in the spring, we have baseball, track and field, and swimming. Our football program uh, since has been in the state championship twice since 2017. Um, our baseball program, our perennial uh, postseason uh, competitors, um, and so we're very proud. And actually, our men's basketball program last year in their first year, year made the postseason, so we're extremely proud of our men's programs. On the other side, you will see our women's sports. In the fall, we have cross-country volleyball, water polo, and volleyball is a, is a relatively new sport for us, too, um, having started it five years ago and having made the playoffs twice. Uh, winter we have basketball and then in the spring we have softball, track and field, swimming and beach volleyball. Beach volleyball is also a relatively new offering. Our softball program has been to the state championship seven years in a, in a row. So you can see by the success that our student athletes have had the caliber of our coaching staff. We have a tremendous coaching staff. Some of the programs that we have are very specific, high caliber, um, cream of the crop athletes are participating in those. Others are participation sports, are um, track and field, swimming, um, those, cross country, those types of sports. If you've done it in high school and you have a passion for doing it, you may not be the best, but you're passionate about it, come on out. Um, we'd love to have you as part of our program. We'd love to have you wear blue and be a bulldog. So next slide, please. And there's our uh, website if you'd like to um, get a hold of myself and learn more about our athletics programs or if you have any questions, happy to answer them for you. Going on to the next. Um, the other hat I wear is, um, that's kind of what, what we, we refer to as the uh, division of fun, um, but we do uh, teach life skills. So in our kinesiology activity courses, we have a, a whole array of different activities that you as a student uh, can involve yourself uh, with. And you can, can see a list of the courses, just a small list of courses we offer. Um, but what this provides you by taking uh, so some of these courses, uh, they are offered in the San Mateo Athletic Club, which is a world-class facility, brand new equipment. It's like you're walking into a private uh, health spa. It's just phenomenal. Um, and most of our coaches are teaching some of the skill-related classes like basketball, swimming, and we have a wonderful dance program. Um, and they do performances at the end of the semester. Um, and, and we even have an associate's degree, which I'll talk to you a little bit later about. So, um, you know, if, if you are interested in trying something new, obviously we all want to try to stay fit. Um, but feel free to, as you, as you are working in your academic schedule, try to get yourself a, a, um, a physical education activity class as well. I think it'll serve you, serve you well. So we'll go on to the next slide. And the last one here, you're going to see a series of degrees and certificates we have. Kinesiology is the, the seventh most popular major in the CSUs and kinesiology is a very broad uh, degree. So there's a lot of things you can do within uh, with a kinesiology degree. You can become uh, um, uh, an athletic trainer. You can go into um, uh, physician's assistants, all those types of things, uh, coaching, uh, teaching. So it's very, very broad. Um, we do have, uh, have a, a degree in kinesiology, an associate's degree. We also have an associate's degree for transfer in kinesiology and then the dance AA, and that's a relatively new degree. Um, students, uh, we're, we're meeting the, the needs of our students on our campus, and like I said, we have a wonderful dance program and a wonderful dance uh, uh, professor. 
We also have a couple of certificate programs that prepare students to get into the workforce in a relatively rapid fashion. So we have a yoga teacher training certificate, we have a Pilates teacher training certificate and a personal training certificate that prepares you for the exam. Um, most of these uh, certificates would take you possibly uh, a semester or two to complete, depending on how, um, how grand a scale you want to, uh, which one you want to pursue. But as a student, and some of you may be going on to a four-year university, if you have one of those certificates in your back pocket, when you get onto a four-year campus, and even here at College of San Mateo, you could find yourself a job on campus in, in the, uh, the health center, the fitness center. So um, it might be a good investment for you to do that. And um, uh, hopefully you're, uh, we're gonna see you around um, in our division. So again, I wanna thank you all for attending Connect to College. If you have any questions about our kinesiology program, here's our website, feel free. And, and I'll, I'll exit the way I entered and say, go Bulldogs. Andreas, I thought you were gonna take a lot longer. What happened? Okay. Um, thank you so much for <laughs> thank you so much for talking to us about getting moving, joining a sport, um, just talking to us about kinesiology in general and how to meet new people and stay fit. I'm telling you, not just am I going to pick up a new career. I think I'm going to go join a sport too. Uh, with that, now we're going to transition over to our three students um, who we have that are going to be on our student panel today. Um, so we have two current CSM students. Um, one who is transferring and one who is in there for, in her first year. And then we have one student who has transferred on um, and is now continuing her master's program at Harvard University. So with that, um, hi, Martin, Jenna, and Aya. Thank you so much for agreeing to be part of our panel. We're excited to have you um, at our Connect to College. And I'm going to be asking you guys a few questions. Um, answer the ones. Before you answer any questions, I'd like to have each of you do a two minute introduction about yourself, um, just with who you are, why you came, just a two minute introduction, and then we'll go ahead and ask some questions. So Martin, do you wanna go ahead and start or? Yeah, sure. Hi everyone, so my name is Martin Uyoa. I am 20 years old, I live in Gilroy, California. And yes, I do commute all the way to CSM from Gilroy, just to tell you how much I actually like, I love CSM. Um, I am a first generation student, as well as a third year. This is actually my last semester right now. I'm gonna be transferring to UC Berkeley in the fall of 2020. So fingers crossed, hopefully campus is reopened. Um, but I am gonna be majoring in media studies with an intent to have a concentration on public policy. And yeah, just quick, just about me. And I'd like to go next or Aya. Okay, um, I guess I'll go next. Wow, um, Gilroy is a much further commute than I was making <laughs> when I was at CSM. Um, I actually lived literally down the hill from CSM. Um, but my name is Aya. I was born and raised in the Bay Area, um, first gen college student, daughter of immigrants. I transferred to UC Berkeley after going to CSM for two years. And then I took a little bit of time off and I'm currently um, finishing up my first year of my master's degree um, at Harvard School of Public Health. So my bachelor's was in public health at UC Berkeley and then now my master's is in epidemiology. Jenna? Yeah, hello. Um, my name is Jenna Heath. I am currently a freshman at College of San Mateo and I'm going to be a sophomore in the fall. Um, my current major is communications and I really hope I get to transfer or tag to UC Davis. I'm a first generation also and I really hope I can graduate college. It's been my number one goal. I've been in the Barry all through my life and I graduated Aragon in 2019. In CSM, I'm currently a co-ambassador uh, with Martin, and I'm also part of a lot of clubs and organizations at CSM. But outside of CSM, I'm also a volunteer at the SPCA, which I've been at for a couple years and at my local church for about 13 years. And um, in my spare time, I really like to do water sports such as kayak and swim in Sonoma, but that's a little bit about me. Awesome. You guys are being so humble. 
Um, so I'll go ahead and start with a couple of questions. If each one of you can actually answer this one, that would be great. <clears throat> First one is, why did you decide to enroll at CSM? I'm thinking maybe we'll start with Aya, we'll go with Martin, and then we'll finish with, um, no, we'll start with Jenna, go with Martin, and then finish with Aya, if that's okay. Yeah, sounds good. So I chose CSM because me personally, college is not cheap and I don't have a lot of money. And I really like CSM when I visited and one of my friends told me about it and I wasn't really sure because it's a community college and I had a certain stigma about it. But when I learned more about TAG and all the opportunities, I actually was super excited and how cheap it was compared to all the other schools that I tended to go to. And it's really amazing that we have TAG, which you can go transfer to and it's saving you a bunch of money. And that's why I decided to enroll in CSM. All right, and then uh, for me, to be quite frank, I was not the best student in high school, and I kind of already knew that I was going to be attending a community college. Um, but I had I had a friend that was already attending CSM, and she took me to the school. I was able to see the campus, and the first minute that I stepped foot on campus, I instantly fell in love with the campus. It was just beautiful, and I had a really good feeling about it. Um, and I kind of followed my gut. And I'm a pretty huge advocate of things happen for a reason. And I think that me visiting CSM that day happened for a reason because in high school, I wasn't involved in anything. I wanted to go to a UC, but knew it was very far out of reach with the GPA I had. Um, and it, CSM was kind of my second opportunity to get a shot at that. And now I'm insanely happy to say that I'm going to Berkeley, which I never imagined was possible. Um, yeah, I can definitely relate to um, both what Jenna and Martin had to say. Um, I did actually relatively well academically in high school, but, you know, as a first generation college student, I didn't know what the different options were for college. So once my friends started talking about taking the uh, SAT and UCs and CSUs versus privates, um, I, I hadn't heard of like any of the schools that they would be talking about. I didn't know what the SAT was. Um, and then I started hearing about just the cost of even taking an SAT class or taking the SAT exam. Um, and I couldn't even afford the class to take the, to study for the SAT or the books to study for the SAT. So community college, I would say it's almost like the decision was made for me. My parents were like, uh, yeah, given money, given just kind of like uh, circumstance, you are gonna go to the community college up the hill from our house. And I didn't know anything else. So I was like, okay, sure, we'll make the best of it. Um, and as soon as I started reaching out to people at CSM, I just felt really welcomed and learned that there were so many opportunities to transfer. Um, I was definitely the only one of my friends that went to community college, the only one that stayed locally. Um, so it was a bit of a transition, um, but like it, to this day is probably the best decision I've made academically. Um, so no regrets. Even though it wasn't much of a decision, the decision was kind of made for me. I'm so happy it, it happened that way. And I'm so happy all three of you guys ended up at CSM. Um, okay, next question. So, oh, actually, before I ask the questions, I do want to give the panelists a head up, heads up that I'm going to be asking them a question after we're done with the student panel just to get your own perspective. So just you guys can look at the chat and see the question if you'd like. But with that, um, Jenna, Martin, and Aya, has it been, this is one of the really common questions that we have, has it been difficult to get into classes at CSM? I'd say personally, yes and no. It kind of depends on the class that you want to take. So for my classes, um, they're intro, and so they're kind of, you have to take them. So like English and math, but there's a variety of them. Um, unlike some of our popular classes, it might be a little bit difficult to get, but then again, you have a little bit of time to get those classes. So uh, for me, I was going to take film in my fall semester, but it happened, I didn't get it, but then in my spring semester, I was able to get it. Um, so those are just some examples of how it's not impossible to get those classes, but it's you can get them. They're not that bad to get, but there's also a range of classes that we offer. 
All right. And in my personal experience, I really didn't have any trouble throughout my three years at CSM. I think there was only about two occasions where I was put on a wait list um, because for one of them, I had decided to switch to a different professor and was put on the wait list because it was a little bit later than my um, registration time. But one thing, one advice that I got um, that I will now share with you is that if you end up on a wait list, uh, I recommend you to still show up the first day of class and be there early, kind of get your name out there to the professor, email them beforehand, be like, hey, I'm on the wait list. My name is Martin um, and I'm hoping to get into your class, but I will see you tomorrow, something like that. Um, and for the most part, there's a huge chance that you actually will get into the class depending on the availability in the room. Um, but for those two classes that I was waitlisted for, I did what I just uh, advised you and I was able to get into both classes without a problem. And then Aya, what about when you were there? Did you ever have any difficulties or that you can remember of? And no, did you, was it super easy for you to get into your classes? The question was about waitlist, right? No, has it been difficult to get into classes? So was it difficult for you to get into classes when you were at CSM? And it was several um, years back, but. Yeah, I would say generally no. Um, it wasn't an issue. If, if I was on the wait list, you would just kind of wait around for the first or second week. And yeah, I generally got into the class. Okay, so next question. Um, were you, are you or were you ever involved on campus? And if so, what were you involved in or what are you involved in? So I'm currently, um, I'm an ambassador. That's one of my biggest things. I absolutely love it a lot. Um, I met some of amazing people and staff and they're super close to my heart and I really love them. And I actually met my boss um, a year ago uh, through this event and it's crazy that I got this job through just saying hello to her. Um, but I'm also part of the Honors Project, which is something also dear to my heart. It's a great program for a lot of students who want to be um, active or competitive um, on their application through um, transferring. Um, so you basically do research and, for this one topic throughout an entire semester and you work one-on-one -on -one with a professor and it's just a great way to get new skills and just learn about your major. And as I've mentioned before, um, I wasn't involved at all in high school and I knew that I wanted to change that about myself. And so literally my first semester, I joined Transfer Club. I was in that for about a semester. And because of that, I was able to visit universities um, for like a two day, one night trip, which was really nice because um, you get a feel of the campus to see if you can see yourself there and if that's the place you wanna go to. Uh, then the following semester, I joined the Puente Latinx Club with which within the same semester I ran to become president and actually got elected as president. So I served the 2018-2019 year and I got involved with Alpha Gamma Sigma, which is an honor society on campus. Um, it's not like the typical Greek life that you think of when uh, you're thinking of a four-year university. Our honor society focuses more on volunteer work and creating a lot of like support systems for like study groups to kind of maintain the academic excellence amongst us students. Um, and then as Jenna uh, mentioned, we are both ambassadors. We're actually co-lead ambassadors on campus, which was honestly a great experience and I love it. So I recommend anyone who would like to uh, apply to become an ambassador, definitely try it out. Uh, it's, it's an amazing experience, but those are the things that I were, was involved in. Um, yeah, I did see a couple questions come in about what is an ambassador, what is the honors project. So I'll try and clarify that a bit in my uh, response to this question. So definitely the main uh, thing I did outside of class in, at CSM was being a, a campus ambassador, a student ambassador, um, which meant that I worked under the marketing department. It was a, a paid position to do a number of things like give tours of the campus to visitors and also go to local high schools and local college recruiting events to talk about community college and to talk about CSM. Um, and that's when you really start to be aware of the different services that are offered at CSM, whether it's transfer opportunities um, or financial support or disability services or the social aspects of uh, the different uh, student life activities at CSM. Um, 
So that was great. And that's, that was definitely being my most memorable experience uh, of being at CSM because that's where I really started to like um, gauge what, what are like the, the biggest benefits of being in community college and making the most out of my, my two years there. Um, I was also involved with the honors project, which gave me a chance to develop uh, a thesis of my choice. And I still talk about that thesis all the time. It's actually um, kind of allowed me to lay the groundwork for the research that I'm doing now, even several years later. Um, so the Honors Project is a course that you take to develop a thesis of your choice. So at the time they had like humanities and the sciences, and I did mine on um, maternal health in Palestine, which is still the work that I'm doing. So that was really awesome for me and I, I got to have mentorship at the time. Um, and the other thing is that I was involved with um, Phi Theta Kappa, which is similar to what Martin was talking about, uh, Alpha Gamma Sigma. They're the two honors societies that we have in community college. Um, and that was great. We got to just uh, work with other students who wanted to um, develop projects and figure out ways to support the community, whether that's the local community at CSM or um, we even did events like throughout San Mateo and then could go on national conferences. And that helped me develop a really awesome like professional network um, and was really fun. And I guess the last main extracurricular thing I did was play volleyball for so my second year. I played on the volleyball team at Kenyatta because CSM didn't have a, a volleyball team at the time. It's super cool that they do now. Um, yeah. Okay, those were some great answers. I'm sitting here and I'm like, oh my God, it's almost like I paid you guys to say such great things about the ambassador program. <laughs> okay, um, next question. Let's see. Jenna, do you want to explain something or Martin? I see you guys texting something. Yeah, yeah. so there, I saw some questions about um, the requirements for honors and for the ambassador program. So for the honors uh, project, um, you need to be eligible with an English 100, or if you had a transcript at your uh, high school, then you can apply. Or, and you also need a GPA of, I believe it's 3.5 unweighted, but if you are a current CSM uh, student, it's a 3.2. And you also, you can see it more online um, and you have to write about 300 to 500 words of why you think you can be a part of the program. And for the ambassador program, I don't remember the requirements, but I know the number one is that you need a car uh, because you'll be driving a lot. And um, you'll also need to be a full-time student, um, but I, I'm not in charge of it. My boss is, uh, but I will, if she wants to talk about that, she can. Okay, so some <laughs> of the requirements for, uh, to become an ambassador, uh, you must have a driver's license and insurance um, and a vehicle because you will have to be driving to off-campus events. Um, you don't have to be comfortable with public speaking, but know that you will be doing public speaking. So oftentimes I take student ambassadors along with me. Um, so when I'm doing presentations, they talk about their student experience. Um, let's see, it is a paid position. So I believe, and I can't remember off the top of my head, I want to say that student ambassador is making $17.50 an hour. Um, you have to send me your resume and your cover letter or letter of interest. Um, email it to me. I'm not hiring right now. We're not currently hiring because of this whole um, situation. Um, if we are back on campus in fall, we may be hiring. I would say you can always email me later on um, to see, but currently we're not hiring. Um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Oh, uh, additional requirements. You have to have at least a minimum 3.0 because we, I think it's really important that you realize you're a student first and you have to do well in school. So first and foremost, you're a student, have a 3.0, maintain the 3.0, um, and just be friendly. I mean, we have some people that are shy and quiet, and that's fine. We'll help you come out of your shell, but just be willing to help others. So that's, um, okay, next question. Was there something you wanted to answer, Martin, before I go on to the next question? Yes, just really quickly, someone asked about AGS. Um, so I'm actually one of the current executive officers for AGS. Um, to, in order to get into AGS, you do have to, 
um, either go by like a point system or a hour system. So meaning you have to maintain, uh, you, you have to get about 17 points a semester and 40 hours of community service or any type of volunteer work just to get the uh, transcript recognition. Um, you get it on your transcript. It's really nice. It says like honors society, AGS, uh, but you do have to pay a $20 fee that just kind of goes towards the clubs and it really is reciprocate, reciprocated back to you with the activities that we do. We tend to use that for our state con uh, state convention, uh, which is really fun. We kind of design our own shirts and things like that, but it's a simple application and you do have to have a minimum of a 3.2 from the previous semester that you apply. Thank you. Um, let's see, another question. So I know you guys semi answered a little bit of this question prior to this question, but what student services or support programs did you utilize while you were at CSM? And I mean, when I ask that, you guys can touch on, I mean, even financial aid, right? If you guys receive financial aid or scholarships or whether it's, I know, Martin, you, I believe you were tagging. So anything that you guys are thinking just in general, um, so students are aware of other support services that they can use on campus. One big uh, service that I used was our writing center that we have in building 18. Um, I'm not a great writer. I'm a good speaker, but not a good writer. And I need people to make sure that it sounds okay and everything's just a-okay. And so there's people in there, professors who will work one-on-one -on -one with you to read over your paper or anything that you need, particularly it's usually English, but I know for me it's also been English and for my honors project, um, but they're amazing staff and they're super comforting and welcoming, but they also give good feedback and so it's super helpful and it's helped me with so many of my essays and so many projects that I've written in the past and it's a great program that definitely should be utilized. Yeah, as for me, um, as Estella mentioned, I tagged with uh, a school. I actually tagged with UC Santa Barbara, which is really nice because even though you'll still be applying to um, all these other schools, that kind of helps you reassure yourself that you will at least have that to fall back on. Um, and even with Santa Barbara, I was very content. Um, but basically, you just have to have the minimum GPA requirement for your major and just be mindful that TAG isn't offered for every major. So you just need to check in with the, uh, the schools themselves to see if they offer it. Uh, but for my major, I was communications. They required a 3.4. I got the minimum 3.4 and you have to have the minimum of 60 uh, units by the end of your term at CSM. And you apply for a TAG in September, which is two months before the general uh, UC application in November. You still have to submit uh, for both. But I did get into Santa Barbara, which I already knew about. So just uh, definitely ask some of the counselors about that. Now. With that, I definitely give big kudos to my counselor, Jesenia Diaz. She's amazing. Uh, honestly, I don't know what I would have done without her because I owe a lot of my success at CSM to her because she really helped me plan everything out so thoroughly. And she was to the, like, the most precise detail about everything that I needed to know. And I, every time I met with her, I walked out of there so confidently, so happy with where I was at the moment. So if you need a counselor, Check out Jesenia Diaz. But then again, every student works differently with certain counselors. So you just need to find the counselor that works best with you. And another shout out to Karen Chadwick, which is fantastic uh, in financial aid. She's always so willing to help students. And um, she's actually still helping me right now fill out some of the financial forms for Berkeley because I was so cool. I was so confused about what they needed. So uh, yeah, financial aid is incredible. Counseling is amazing. So Kudos to the CSM staff. Um, yes, I agree with all of that. Um, it's just incredible being at CSM because it's kind of like whatever you need, someone, several people will be there willing to help you and they're very available and accessible, which you really don't get at a large university. Um, so if I had a question about my financial aid, I would simply go to the financial aid department and I already had developed relationships with these people and sometimes they would even reach out to me. I wouldn't even have to, um, I wouldn't even have to find them. They would call me or, or email me saying there's a scholarship or that you should complete this form that you haven't completed yet. Um, scholarships was another really awesome thing that was such a game changer for me. Um, 
So I think it's every year that we would have the scholarship awards. Um, and yeah, I just the fact that I could me and, and actually it's a, you'd be surprised like I didn't expect to necessarily receive that many, but I did. Um, and I think it's just being able to like there's a lot less competition than again if you were at like a huge four year university. And again, so many people available and willing to like help you read through your application and tell you about the different scholarships that are out there. Um, so, I mean, I didn't, I finished my bachelor's degree, my undergrad education with no debt. And I don't think a lot of people can say that. I mean, while I was at CSM, I didn't pay anything for my classes or tuition or any of it because of financial aid and scholarships. Um, and like, I'm still very, very grateful for that. Um, so yeah, financial aid, I also spent a lot of time in the Learning Center, um, which is a really awesome space. So there's free tutoring available uh, for pretty much any subject. I struggled a lot with like my, my calculus at the time. So there were tutors to help me with that. Um, and yes, I think those were like the scholarships, the financial aid, um, Learning Center tutoring, and just yeah, whatever, whatever you need, it's, it's available. And that's like the beauty of, of CSM. Thank you. Jenna, do you want to add anything or no? Did they cover it all? They covered it all. That's great. <laughs> okay. I'm going to ask you guys one last question and then I'm going to ask the panelists a question before we end um, the, before we end tonight. So students, what is one piece of advice or one thing you wish you would have known that somebody would have told you or what do you want to let all of our incoming students know? One thing I would say is I never expected what community college would be like. I had a certain stigma about it and I really tried when I started not to have that stigma and to start fresh and to take it as an opportunity. And I wish somebody told me about that and gave, told me sooner so I can get even more excited when I was in high school, that community college would have been great. But something also was the people around me, like all the staff, the professors, my faculty, the students were all so loving and caring. And that's, it. I, I love this campus so much. I'm not just saying that because I'm an ambassador but I just really love it here. And everybody's like helped me in so many different ways. And it's, I wish earlier, I wasn't so like sad that I was going to a community college. Now I'm super excited. And I honestly, I really don't wanna leave, but then again, I have to leave to go to Davis, but it's an amazing campus. And I wish people could realize how beautiful it is here and that we should just remove that stigma and just take it as an opportunity for us to grow as students. Yeah, so um, I honestly, first and foremost, I'd say just go into it with a complete open mind because you never know what kind of experience you're going to have and the experience you have is what you make out of it. Um, another thing is that these, all these resources are available to you. You just need to put that uh, step forward to actually use them. Uh, that's one thing that I learned at like, I think through after like my first semester, I started figuring out a lot of these things that would have really benefited me like my first semester, which was my poorest semester academically. Um, but I would just say take advantage of everything because it's there for you, um, as mentioned before. And just make the most, get involved on campus because I think that just enhances your experience by far. Getting involved on student, with student government or joining clubs, you can create your own club. It's very easy too. So get creative. Uh, get involved because that's also important on the UC application. So just be mindful that of all the things you're going to be doing at CSM, you will be talking about in your UC application. So you want to make it just look as great as possible when you're uh, transferring. So that's my advice. Um, yeah, so I just want you all to know that even though this feels like it might feel like a very dramatic decision right now, um, and there is, I remember having to deal with the stigma a lot at the time, being the only one of my friends that went to community college. Um, just know that it's, that's not worth stressing over. Um, that's all very temporary. And uh, there are just, I mean, Jenna and Martin are like awesome examples of um, making the best of your time at CSM. Um, 
And I think it's an opportunity to really develop a lot of confidence and to really figure out what you what it is that you want to study and what it is that you want to do. And if you do eventually transfer uh, to a four year university, just know that you're going to be way ahead of the other students. Um, so by the time I got to Berkeley, initially, I thought that I would be like, not as smart as the other, other students. I thought that I wouldn't do as well in terms of like grades. I thought I wouldn't do as well academically, but very quickly learned that like transfer students are like killing it um, once you get to, to four universities. Like they are doing really, really awesome because they come in way more motivated. Um, they have a clearer sense of what they want to do, what they want to study and what they want to be involved in. Um, and they, they had to work to get to, to the position that they're in. So they, they had something to prove. They had to overcome stigma. Um, so don't worry about the stigma. Um, just know that, again, that's all very temporary. And if you do all transfer, just know that you're going to be awesome. And don't let imposter syndrome get to you. Thank you, all three. I really, really appreciate you guys doing the student panel. I'm sure you put some of the students mind at ease um, and you guys all had great answers. So thank you, I really appreciate it. With that, um, I'd like to invite the panelists to give a short 60 second testimony about why they're at CSM or why they decided to come to CSM. I have a few people that have volunteered or said we could go ahead and ask them. So Christy, would you like to start? Sure. Um, Hi everyone, again, Christy Ridgway, Dean of Language Arts. And when I first came to College of San Mateo, again, it was about 18 years ago now, I was applying for a job as a professor of ESL. So um, initially it was because I was offered a job, so I took it, but I also was looking for full-time jobs. I started part-time and later when I looked for a full-time job, it was much more important to be picky about where I might be going. And I really love the fact that CSM was diverse has a diverse student body. For me as an ESL professor for so many years, that was really important to see people of different ages, cultures, backgrounds, languages, not just in the ESL department, but the college as a whole. So I really valued the diversity that the college has. And then also, I really loved when I came in the dedication and just the heart that the faculty had for students. So it wasn't just about teaching academic skills, but it really was about connecting with students and trying to make a difference in their lives to help them get to wherever their next step was. And I really felt like I wanted to be a part of that. So I never thought I'd be at a job this long at one college in the same place, because I tend to be a person that likes different things, but here I am all these years later. So that's why I came to CSM. Thank you. Andreas, would you like to go next? Love to, thank you, Stella. So my initial career ambition was to coach men's soccer. That, that's where I first started off at the four-year level. And um, I, I was a graduate assistant at San Francisco State, and I was recruiting uh, student athletes from the community college system. And as they came to us, I, I really got to, to know them uh, better than some of the, the freshmen that we, we had uh, recruited from high school. And really understood, um, you know, where they came from and what they were doing and, and uh, loved, you know, their, their backgrounds. And so I thought that might be, you know, a cool um, uh, uh, landing spot for me is to, to coach at a community college. And so I started off um, as a full-time men's soccer coach at Skyline College. I applied for that job and, and was fortunate enough to get it and loved it. And, and, and it was the right place. I, I, that, that's exactly where I wanted to be. I love the student body there. As, as Christy had said earlier, same thing applies to me. Um, and then ultimately, uh, I was the athletic director and dean there after my coaching stint. And then the job opened up at College of San Mateo. And if you look just at the top of my head, you can see why I came to College of San Mateo. I mean, just the, the, the views are spectacular. Um, the, really, the, the, people, the people are what make our institution. It's not, it's not the views. It's who you've heard from today. Um, it, it's the people, uh, the faculty, the staff, um, the administration. We really have our, um, our focus on you and your best interests. So I couldn't be in a better place than College of San Mateo. Thank you. Thank you. I think the next person that said she would be willing to volunteer is Ashley. Ashley, are you still with us? Yes. Yep, I'm still here. 
Hi, everyone. Um, so initially, I came to College of San Mateo because I was looking for a job, right? Probably like everyone else. Um, but I remember the first day, um, my first day at work, I came in and Heidi walked me around, the Dean of Business walked me around and introduced me to everyone. And everyone said, oh my gosh, I've been waiting to meet you. And I thought, little old me, like, you know my name. Um, and then our new chancellor now, um, Mike Claire, he called me by name and when he walks down the hall, he still remembers my name and greets me by name. He didn't forget who I was. Um, so it was little things like that that made me feel very welcome in, in a warm environment. Um, everyone was very caring and that's why I'm still at College of San Mateo. Awesome, thank you. Jessica, would you like to elaborate on your decision? Hi, yes. Um, the reason why I'm at College of San Mateo is because it's always been my dream to give back to the community college system, which I was a part of. Uh, a lot of the students on the panel talked about stigma, and I felt it firsthand when I graduated high school. I was a first-generation college student. I had been accepted at UC Berkeley, but I chose not to go and to go to my community college, the, my local one, and I felt um, a lot of pressure from my high school teachers telling me that I made the wrong decision, and little did I know that was going to be the most transformative three years of my life. I was able to take classes I wouldn't have had I been under the pressure of time and money at a four-year university. I had faculty who um, have number one bestsellers on Amazon right now, and I truly blossom into the person that I am today. So I really want to encourage students to know that your college experience doesn't start when you transfer. It starts right now. It is what you make of it, and this might be the best three years of my life. I will say it was, even though I did end up going to UC Berkeley, I was so spoiled by my community college experience that nothing compared. So that's why I'm here at College of San Mateo today to remind you that you are where you need to be and these relationships that you build and these experiences are going to make you the person that you're going to know 10 years from now. So thank you for letting me share. Thank you. And then Alex, would you like to go? And yeah, absolutely. Um, so I actually, it's, all, it's always been uh, uh, really important to me to give back to a community that I uh, grew up in. So I think I've spent a lot of my li adult life at CSM, um, both as a student, but also, you know, as a, when I was a staff member, as a part-time faculty member, uh, as a full-time faculty member. Um, and what I would just say is that just making connections with um, a faculty member, like a professor or a counselor or librarian, make a connection with at least one fellow student, uh, and of course, our staff members in financial aid, admissions, EOPS, if you can connect, and administrators too, I'd, I want to shout them out, that if you can connect with someone from at least one person from each of those four groups, you'll have a great experience. And I personally had that experience uh, and really wanted to do the same uh, for students as well. Uh, and I actually left the college for a little bit for a few years to be an administrator at another college. And I just miss the culture at College of San Mateo. I really miss teaching. I miss counseling. So um, it, it was always a goal of mine to make it back. And I'm so glad I did because it is a family environment. And when I say the CSM family, I mean it. And every single uh, person that works at CSM is fantastic. And I'm just proud to be a part of it. And um, again, hope that you have a similar experience and I'm confident you will. Thank you for that, Alex. Okay, really quick. Ariana, do you want to share? Should I go to q and I'll put you on the spot. You're on mute. Yes, I can share. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Ariana Avendano, Program Services Coordinator for EOPS, for those who um, do not remember. Um, so I was a former CSM and EOPS student. Um, like some of the folks um, on here, um, we, we have our own um, experience that we've shared. And so we really are a community. Um, my EOPS counselor um, actually called me and told me to apply to this position five years ago. Um, time flies. <laughs> um, and so um, I, I thought it was a great opportunity. I missed working directly with students and advocating and just um, witnessing students go through um, their own college experience similar to mine. Um, I think it's important for students to 
not just gain basic skills while they're in school, but um, just really uh, get to know their professors and staff that are really there to support them while they are moving on to what, whether it's an associate's degree that they wish to pursue or, or transferring to a four-year institution. Um, if it wasn't for my counselor, Sylvia Aguirre in EOPS, um, her advising, which I'm so grateful for, um, I probably wouldn't have transferred um, to a university, but her guidance was exceptional. Um, and just the, the services that you receive as an EOPS student um, are, are amazing. I mean, uh, the financial assistance is obviously helpful. Um, the academic support really is what makes our program unique, to be honest. Um, we have a huge center and we support our students. Um, I advocate for students and, and um, it's, it's really amazing to see them transition and grow um, personally as well. Um, and so um, it's a little weird having to support my students um, away from campus, but um, it, it's, it's ongoing. And um, if you are interested in, in applying for EOPS, um, you know, we're gonna support you the whole, the whole way. And you have a lot of staff at CSM that are willing to do the same for you. Um, we want our students to get as many resources as, po as possible, and especially right now during these trying times. Um, so again, my experience is unique, just like everyone else is here. Um, right now, community college is the way to go. <laughs> um, and I encourage students um, to apply to our program, go to our website. We have a QR code you can scan. It's not gonna take you too long to go ahead and do that. Um, and do not hesitate to reach out to us. There's a lot of uh, resources at our campus um, that did not exist when I was a student, when Estella was a student. Um, so we're, we're so excited that you all um, were able to join us for this event. Thank you, Ariana. Okay, with that, we're gonna go to a couple of the Q&A questions that were asked in our Q&A box. Um, I see a reoccurring theme um, but first, I will answer one of them, which says, um, if you're a student at Skyline or at uh, Kenyatta, are you able to, how can you transfer to CSM? Once you apply to either Kenyatta, CSM, or Skyline, you are SMCCD student, meaning that you are a student of the district. One application gets you into all three campuses. So with that being said, I do want to have a little disclosure, unless you are a concurrent enrollment student. If you are a concurrent enrollment student, you will have to submit an extra um, college connections concurrent enrollment form. But for anyone who is an incoming freshman, one application gets you into all three campuses. So beware when you're actually applying um, or registering for your classes, because every single semester we have students that come to our campus and they're asking where building 63 is or something. Well, we don't have that building. And oftentimes it's because they register for a class at Skyline or Kenyatta. So just make sure that you're registering for the correct campus um, because you'll be able to see all three campuses unless you select only CSM on your WebSmart account. Um, let's see, I see a couple of questions about the Promise Scholars Program. So Tiffany, are you still on the line? I don't know if you're, yes. Um, can you just, they're asking if you have to have financial need to be in um, part of this Promise Scholars Program. Can you just do a quick, yeah, that. sure. You don't have to have a financial need, but we do take into consideration whether or not you're a first generation student, um, if you do have a financial need, um, and if you are homeless foster youth. Thank you. I also see a lot of questions about concurrent enrollment, um, which I'm sure Carol is grinning over there in the back because Carol and I have had an immense amount of questions and emails. Um, I my the easiest answer to this would be go onto our website and follow the steps, the concurrent enrollment steps. Um, if you go onto collegeofsanmateo.edu and you just do the A through Z index, go to concurrent enrollment, um, follow those steps, make sure you upload your College Connections concurrent enrollment form via your WebSmart. And yes, you will still have to apply to the College of San Mateo as a College of San Mateo student. And you will have to get your counselor signature and parent signature. Carol, is there anything that you want to add on that on your end for concurrent enrollment? 
Uh, those students that are trying to take a um, course that has a math prerequisite, they will need to fill out the um, concurrent enrollment math and English um, form and submit the appropriate documentation. So um, there are a couple of different steps when it comes to taking a class at CSM. Um, they, if, you, if it does not have um, a prerequisite of a math or English, um, the student does not need to fill out that form. I know that a lot of the questions were in regards to math or, and, and I've reached out to those people offline. Thank you. Um, there's a student that is asking, and I don't know who can answer this. Um, let's see, can I join the honors project as a senior right now? Anyone know the answer? Um, I'll answer it. So um, currently we don't offer summer for new uh, students who wanna be part of the program. We do offer independent honors, but you have to be, have a first seminar first. Um, so you have to do fall or spring in our class. So you can either choose humanistics or science. Um, I'm going into my second humanistics in the fall. Uh, so if you wanna be part of it, you should do uh, sign up for fall 2020 and you need to make sure that before you add it to your um, registration, you need to apply first. So if you go online to CSM Honors, you have to apply first and wait for our coordinator, David Laterman, to email you back if you got in or not, and then you have to register after that. So with that, I wanna keep everybody's time in mind and be respectful of everyone's evening. So I wanna thank you all for coming for coming to our 14th annual Connect to College, but first ever virtual Connect to College. Um, thank you so much. Just a reminder, we will be sending this recorded video with a short survey. So if you could please answer the survey, that would greatly benefit us. Other than that, thank you all and have a great evening. Go Bulldogs. <laughs>